Hello everyone, welcome back. In our previous tutorial, we learned about arrays, their basics, declaration, creation, initialization of arrays. In this tutorial, we are going to deep dive into Java Arrays Utility class. To begin with, we will start understanding how to process array elements. By processing array elements, we mean that how to process or iterate over each of the array elements. So there are two ways to iterate over array elements. One is for loop, another is for each loop. We will see both of these examples in our code. Now let's imagine that we have a array of double values. Here I have a double list with four values 1.2, 3.4, 4.6 and 3.5. Now let's say our task is to find the largest element using the for loop. So what would we do? So I would initialize the maximum value with the first element of an array. That's what I have done here by saying double max equal to double list zeroth element. That means I'm treating 1.1.2 as the maximum value. Next, I would use a for loop using the for keyword. And then I will say int i, which is the index. I will start with zero. I will iterate till the length of the array is reached and then i++ plus plus. and then as I am iterating over each element I am checking that if if the element at the current index is greater than the max value then max value is equal to the current element and then finally when I am out of this for loop I print that the maximum element is max let's execute it we see that the max element is 4.6 so this is how we iterate over an array and we find out which element is belonging to our selection criteria. Now also let's see how would we do the printing of each of the element using another version of for which is for each. So I write the for and then since this is an element of double so I would write double then the variable name say var and then I write the double list, which is the name of an array. Now, this var holds the value of the current element in iteration. I can say sysout and then here I can simply print var with a space following it. So I see that 1.2, 3.4, 4.6 and 3.5 are printed. So this is how we understood how to iterate over elements using for and for each loop. Next we are going to learn about how do we pass arrays to methods. Just as you can pass primitive values to methods, you can also pass arrays to methods. Let's understand this using an example. Let's say I want to print the current uh, list, whatever I have. Let's say I have an array again of double, double values and I want to print this. But in this scenario, I want to create a separate method. Let's say public static void print elements. And here in this method, I expect let's say a double array so I have array here and what I would do is I would use a for loop here and I would just try to write the similar code that we have written uh, some time back where I say that I want to iterate over this uh, double array where the uh, input array is iterated and then I am trying to print the value by followed by space so double value followed by some space will be printed here. 
now this is a method which I can call from here and all I have to do is I have to pass it the array so here in this program I had written a method which is a static method because I have to access it inside another static method and then it returns nothing its name is print elements it takes input parameter as a double array and then I use that array and I print each element using the for loop let's execute this we see that the elements of the array are printed by passing that array in another method this is how we can pass a array to a method we can also return the arrays from methods let's understand this let's say that I want to declare another array and I want to uh, say that I need a copy of this list right and I want to create a copy and then I pass it uh, double list and I want this method to take an array as input and create a copy and send me back so how do we do this what we can do is we can create another method public static but here it will return a array as as its return value the name of the method is create copy and it expects an array of double type here what I can do is here I can use let's say for loop variant I can say int i is equal to 0 i is less than array dot length i plus plus and then what I can do is I can create a copy and I can say that the size of this array would be equal to array dot length and then here I am going to return the copy and in this loop I am going to assign the values I can say something like this I can say that the element at ith index in the copy array should be equal to the element at ith index in the original array and then we return this back and then finally I can use my print elements back and I can print my the double list copy let's execute it so when I execute it I see that I am printing the double list copy and its values are similar or exactly same as the original array this is what I mean by returning array from methods now we are going to dive into another aspect which you should know while dealing with arrays which is the array utility class Java has provided the array utility class the java.util.arrays class contains various static methods for sorting, selecting arrays, searching in arrays, comparison of arrays and maybe filling array elements also these methods are overloaded with all primitive types now let's see this in action we will use our new class arrays demo here we are going to use a string array which is initialized with some values Abdul Rahim Mike J Kathy are the elements in then in this in this the first task which I would like to do is let me create a copy of an array using arrays remember how we created a copy of a double array some time back we had to iterate over original array and assign the values one by one 
There is a second method to copy a Java array using arrays.copyof method. Now let's see how we would do that. So I can say that I want to create another array which is a copy and then what I would do is I can say arrays dot copy of and inside copy of what I can write is the first thing is source array which is the string array and second thing we have to provide how many elements we have to copy so I can say you have to copy all the elements and then we will use for loop I can use the for loop to print this copy so I can say that when I execute this I see that all the four all the five elements have been copied using arrays.copy of we do not have to write any code to iterate over original array and create a copy so this was one example which where we used a utility function provided by arrays class second thing is let's say we have an integer array let's say I have an integer array uh, I will call this array as original and I will initialize it with values 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Now these elements are in the reverse order. Now we want to sort this array. So what we would do is I can write the sorted array is equal to arrays dot sort original arrays dot sort original now let's see what it expects here it is saying that it cannot convert from void to integer array now this means that arrays dot sort is returning a value which is void if you read the description it says that sorts the specified array into ascending numerical order and the implementation says that it takes only one element as a parameter which is array to be sorted and it does in place sorting this means that if I print the elements here let's say for int i i less than original dot length i plus plus and I print the elements here I print the ith element followed by some spaces and I print a new line after that and then when I copy this thing and I want to use this same code afterwards so after I assign the value to i then the error would go off so this one is before I can write this is before and this one is after I do the sorting so note that here I am sorting using arrays utility method right and now I execute this program so before it was 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and after sorting here I should write after and after sorting I get the value as 1 to 10 in a sorted fashion I would also like to show you that there are so many other useful methods in arrays utility class 
you could do binary search you can see the methods like binary search you can you can fill the array with some default values you can create a copy and so on i would recommend you to uh, use this arrays utility class and play around with it create some sample array, sample arrays and then use the utility methods in java.util.arrays class and then write some sample programs so in this tutorial we learned about how to process the arrays using for and for each loop we also saw how can methods take and return arrays we also understood that we have a utility class at our disposal which we can use to process the arrays in very interesting ways so stay tuned for our next series of tutorials goodbye